Hello Stampers, Kelly Atchison at stampabove.com coming to you from Menasha, Wisconsin. I have a gorgeous card to make with you today. I also have a really pretty box that I'm going to show you and it all is part of this bundle. This is the Wonderful Romance Bundle and this is my newest online class being released today. So I'm super excited to show you what I've done here. Um, First of all, when you order the bundle from me, you get the online class for free. The online class contains eight beautiful cards, a gorgeous box, and eight more cards to go in the box. So it, this is a really great value. When you order the bundle from me, you get it free, or you can buy it from me for $25. Now, it includes, this is what you need to order, the bundle, which is the wonderful romance and the wonderful floral framelits the lace embossing folder which is just spectacular we're going to use that in the card today a roll of the variegated ribbon and this is petal pink and whisper white it is seam binding it is so beautiful and i'll show you how beautiful today also some of our fresh fig eighth inch sheer ribbon this just goes along with the colors in there and it was used on several of the cards in the online class then we've got these pretty frosted flower elements, um, embellishments I should say. These are super cool and the clear ones you can color with your stamp and blend markers, your alcohol markers. These are super fun. The floral romance seals and these just make a wonderful embellishment. They're very low profile so they won't add any additional postage when you send out your cards. And last but not least is this gorgeous designer series paper. And I'm gonna pull all of it out here. Oops, I'm missing one, there we go. Look at this paper. So we've got two, well actually three sheets of each design. I've already used one of these. This is called the Floral Romance Specialty Designer Series Paper. These two patterns are vellum. They're um, really, really elegant, rich looking. And then we've got three of these and three of these. So beautiful, beautiful paper in this pack. All right, I am going to bring in my card and we're going to start stamping. I can't hardly wait to show you what I've got. Okay, I've got all my cardstock layers here, and if you're new to me, generally what I like to do is I like to show you and tell you what the cardstock dimensions are first. That way, if you want to stamp along with me, you can pause the video, you can cut up all the pieces that you need, and you can make your card along with me. The other thing that I want you to know is I will always put the dimensions on my blog, and you can find my blog right here. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, in the description below the video, it says see more. When you click on that, you're going to find a direct link right to my blog post for today. Okay, because if you just go to www.stampabub.com, that's going to take you to my blog on whatever day and you're going to find whatever projects I have on there, you know, they're going it, to, it's not going to go right to this one. But if you look under the YouTube video and click on the link that I provided directly to this blog post, you're going to find all the details. You're going to find photographs there um, and all the measurements and also a shopping list so that you can buy any of the elements you may not have or that you can't live without. <laughs> okay, so I've got one of our Whisper White envelopes here. I've got a piece of fresh fig cardstock. This is eight and a half by five and a half, and I'm just going to burnish that edge good. Then, um, oh, that's our envelope, we already covered that. I've got a piece of Whisper White, this is four by five and a quarter, a piece of Petal Pink, that's four by five and a quarter, and then I've just got a couple scraps of white here, and a piece of that pretty vellum paper, this is three quarters by four inches long. This is a paper piercing mat. Um, I cover it with printer paper because I, I like to use this to stamp on. It just gives you a better surface and your stamping will um, always be nice and even. So that's, for any of you that are new, that's what this is all about. We sell these piercing mats in our catalog. And just so you know, anything that I mention in my videos, you can go right to my Stampin' Up! store 
Um, it's on my blog. You'll find a button in the right-hand column that says online ordering. And you can go right to my store and you can just tar start typing in Petal Pink cardstock or Petal Pink and all the items we have in Petal Pink will come up and then you can just select them when you're ready to place an order. That makes things really super easy. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is bring in that lace folder that is so incredibly gorgeous. I'm going to place my Petal Pink cardstock layer in here this way because I want my design to go across. I'm going to run this through the Big Shot. I'll be right back. And here we go. Now this I would consider to be the back of the folder and you can choose which one you like best, it doesn't really matter. But I like where my flowers are raised up. Here they're kind of inverted. Here we've got the, um, I don't know what you'd call this, the little, the little circle frame dealies. Um, they're the part that's raised up and the flower's the part that's raised up. This is the side that I think is the front. But this side is equally as pretty. So whichever one you like, this is your card, you do what you want. Okay, and again, this was the lace folder. This is one of our super thick um, dynamic folders, so you get that super deep impression going there. I'm gonna get my inside ready first of all. And with vellum, we are always challenged with what type of adhesive to use with vellum. I choose to use mini glue dots. And I'm gonna stick my mini glue dots under the images. So I'm gonna make sure that I don't put them where it's kind of white or more clear here. I'm gonna put about three mini glue dots on and I'm gonna add them right under my flowers or my leaves so that I can't see them. And I found this to work really good with this um, vellum. I'm just gonna place this on the bottom of my Whisper White layer. And this is just gonna be a really pretty little embellishment for the inside of my card. I like to decorate the insides of my cards because I truly believe that the party should not end when you open up a card. And lots of times our cards are they're just blank inside. Well, mine aren't, but people's are. I mean, it's a thing. <laughs> so don't, don't leave your card naked inside. Give it a little oomph. I see I kind of pushed that out of the way there. There we go. And isn't that just so, so pretty? I love that look. We can also take the embossed layer here, and I'm using multi-purpose liquid glue. This is also found in my store. If you happen to need some adhesive, I highly recommend it. It's what I always make cards with. I shouldn't say always, because once in a while you have a need for a tape runner or like the mini glue dots or stuff like that. Okay, now we are ready to do some, oh, I have, well, I'm gonna do the stamping first. Where did my framelits go? Here they are. Like, oh, did you see this? This is an edge lit, and this can go down. You can die cut this down the front of your card like this. Incredibly beautiful. I made several using this with um, my online class. Gorgeous, gorgeous die. First thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in some memento ink as far as the stamping is concerned. Ooh, I almost dropped my ink pad. And I'm gonna ink up this big floral image. And this is just so pretty and elegant. I love it. I'm just gonna stamp that right here. And then as long as we're stamping, let me, I'm gonna clean this off. This is a chamois. It's a cleaner for your stamps. It works wonderfully. Also available, it's called chamois. So you can find it that way. Um, the next thing I'm going to do here is bring in my Fresh Fig ink. Now, where did I get this color combination, right? I've got Petal Pink with Fresh Fig. Then there's some greens in there, too. You'll find all of the colors that you um, that coordinate with the suite of paper right here underneath the name of it. There's a label on the package. It says Fresh Fig, Mossy Meadow, Pear Pizzazz, Petal Pink, Sahara Sand, and Whisper White. And I tend to grab my color choices when I'm designing cards from that back of the paper. That's how I come up with my color combinations. Back to what I was doing here. 
I am going to do the thinking of you and I'm just going to stamp that right here and we're going to set that aside for a second while we color in this flower. Now, I I'm a little embarrassed because I have to tell you this. I um, lost one of my old olive stamp and blend markers. I know it's here someplace, I just cannot locate it. And don't you hate it when that happens because it's so incredibly frustrating. If you've ever done that, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I lost it. So I'm gonna be using Stampin' Blends and I would use the old olive dark and light for my leaves if I could find them, but I can't. So I'm gonna use old olive ink. I'm simply pressing the ink pad in the middle so that I can get ink into the lid here. I'm gonna go back to my aqua painter, which is a fabulous tool. It was my mode of coloring forever. This is what I always grabbed was my ink and my aqua painter. But ever since we got the um, Stampin' Blends, I have been using those like all the time. I'm just gonna come in here and you're gonna go through and you're gonna color all of this. Now I just go through and kind of color it. I'm gonna make my leaves all green. And there's nothing fancy about this, so I'm going to fast forward my video. As soon as I'm done, I'll be right back and then I'll show you what I did to make these leaves look spectacular. Okay, now that I have all the leaves green, now I'm gonna come back in and I'm going to take some more of my ink, a little bit darker, more concentrated, and come in and do a little bit of shading, and I'm kind of following the vein lines on my leaves. I want this to look just a little shaded. It gives it a really pretty look when you do this. And you can see that this is super easy to do. So don't be intimidated by it if you think, oh, I can't do that. I'm not artsy. Oh, nonsense. You can do it. That's all I'm doing. It's pretty simple. Now I see this one got kind of dark, so I'm just going to fill that side in because it's uh, it got a little darker than I wanted. Come back here and do a little bit more here. I see some white spots in there. Let's just make you see your leaves look really pretty. And I also added some green to my stems. Okay, clean your aqua painter off just like this. Now I'm going to come in with the light blackberry bliss. And I'm going to color in these little flowers. And these are pretty simple. And like I said, I would have rather used the blends on here. And I'll tell you why. You can't do a lot of blending on this Whisper White cardstock with an aqua painter because it's water-based. These blends are alcohol-based and the paper doesn't react the same way as it does to water. If you overbrush with the aqua painter on regular Whisper White cardstock, you're going to get some peeling of your paper and that's never attractive. So you have to like it's kind of like a one and done thing get your color on there and move on don't keep trying to brush it and do things just doesn't work out well with these you will have none of that so I like to use the aqua painter with watercolor paper and also our shimmery white cardstock that's what it works best on that has kind of a coating on it that doesn't let the paper pill up this Whisper White is um, made for ink and these alcohol markers, and it is phenomenal. So there you go. There's, there's your little tip of the day about different mediums for coloring and why you use certain cardstocks with them. This is the Dark Petal Pink Stampin' Blend Marker. And I'm just, again, following the color palette that was listed on the back of the Designer Series Paper Pack. Oops, I missed a few right here. And then I also added this color to the center of each of my flowers. Now, you may think that we're done with this, but we're not. <laughs> we're gonna add the cherry to the top of the cupcake, as I would say, with a cherry on top. And I'm using Wink of Stella to add some pretty glimmer to my flowers. And this is just gonna make them sparkle and you're gonna be a rock star, I promise. Okay, there we go. Can you see that on the camera? It is just so, so pretty. Okay, 
Then, the cool thing about this is there's a framelit to cut it out, so you don't have to do any fussy cutting with this. It fits right on here. And what I like to line up here is like this big leaf, and then you can see those little bud things pop right through in the little holes. I'm gonna run this through my Big Shot. I'll be right back. Okay, this falls right out. Boom, look at that. Now, I've still got a few little pieces left in here. So, oh my Lord, can you guys just guess what I did? Oh my gosh. My lid for my box got caught on the edge of my desk and it threw this confetti everywhere. And guess what? I just vacuumed my office yesterday. Does your floor in your stamping room get just completely, it looks like, oh my gosh, it looks like, I don't know what. Looks like like this blew up all the time. <laughs> That's what it looks like, right? Okay, so I always like to make sure that my dies are cleaned out before I put them away because next time they'll be ready to rock. The other thing that I need to do, oh, I'll, sh I'll leave this here because I'm going to show that to you again, is do you see all this confetti? Look at all this confetti all over it. That's from my box. I'm so sorry. What a mess I've made here. Guess I'll be doing a little cleaning <laughs> again. Okay. I'm going to take this beautiful label and I'm going to die cut this. I wanted my thinking of you to be kind of up here in the corner. So I'll be right back. Okay. One run through the machine. This cuts out perfectly. Um, leave your die on your pieces when you go to use this Big Shot die brush. And again, I sell these in my store. They're fabulous. They will really help you to use your intricate dies more often when you don't have to sit and poke out all those little pieces. That makes me absolutely crazy. But um, if you leave your die on there, you can be a little more aggressive with your brush. If you take your die off, then you have to be kind of careful so you don't destroy what you're doing. Oh, look at confetti everywhere. Oh my goodness. And then I know somebody's gonna ask me about this. So this is just a piece of um, dryer vent cover. It's magnetic. And I, I like to bring this out and set it on my desk when I get all my um, framelits out of a pack so that I don't lose any of them. It helps keep them right here. So it is magnetic and it's just kind of to hold everything in place. So hopefully I don't lose anything like my old olive Stampin' Blend markers. Okay. I think we're ready for assembly. One more thing. I'm going to tie a bow. This is a bow jig, and my friend Denise's husband makes these. Now, she's gone for the winter. She'll be back in March. If you would like to order one, um, wait until March and then contact me, and I will put you in touch with her. But this is super simple to make a bow. Let me show you this again. If you want to make one of your own, these holes are one inch apart and then a half an inch and a half an inch. It's just a piece of wood with two nails. You bring this over, cross it, go over the middle and back under, and now you're gonna tie it in a single knot right here. This is when you would kind of move back and forth that center knot, you can move it around to make it look nice. Kind of like I'm doing right now, okay? Pull out the nail, pull your bow off, and this will give you a perfect little bow every single time. These are fantastic, I use mine Anytime I'm tying a bow, for the most part. All right, I'm going to snip this off. And snip this off, this seam binding. You guys know, we sell others, um, we've sold other seam bindings in the past. This is just so, so nice. Okay, now I think we're ready for assembly. We're gonna bring this beautifulness back in here. Let me close this ink chat up before I have a disaster. I'm gonna get out my regular dimensionals and my mini dimensionals. I'm gonna put a couple dimensionals on the back of my label layer and we can add that to the front of our card right away. I'm just gonna put that right down here. And then we're gonna add some dimensionals. Oops, I see that I, oh look, that just fell out. It was stuck in there. I'm like, oh, I got one stuck in there. Nope, it fell right out. I love it when dyes do that, don't you? It's so much nicer than having to poke and pick and do all that. Yeah, no poking and picking. Okay, so when you're putting the dimensionals on the back of this layer, be careful not to put any underneath these two leaves right here by the edge, and I'll show you why in just a second. We're gonna kinda stay away from that. 
And I'm just going to add some dimensionals to these outlying flower leaf images to kind of give it some support. And get these all off of here. Okay. Now I'm going to bring this in. I want my flower stem to kind of stay straight up, but I want these leaves to be touching my um, oval layer. So I'm going to bring it in just like this. And that's why we didn't put any dimensionals under the leaves right here where they're overlapping this label. And then I'm going to grab my mini glue dots and add this bow right to the bottom like it's holding this little bouquet together. Just like that. What are we going to do here? Ooh la la. We're going to bring in these floral romance seals. Oh. What do you guys think? Is that not incredibly beautiful? And you can see that, I hope you can see that wink of Stella on the flowers, so pretty. Now, don't go any place because I, I have more to show you. Um, oh, we need to do our envelope. So, um, just like the front or the inside of your card, I don't like naked envelopes either. And when I have time, I always stamp them up. I don't always have time, but if I do, I stamp them up. I'm just gonna take that floral image with the petal pink ink and I am going to add that it's kind of fallen off the side here but how pretty is this who wants this in the mail I know right everybody okay now let me show you something else I've got some sample cards that I received in swaps using this bundle that I'll share with you let me get this cleaned up a bit I actually made four of these cards, so I've got a gift set, and I am going to, I think, gift these to my mom. Shh, don't tell her. This will be a gorgeous gift to go along with Mother's Day presents. Look at this. This is a beautiful box that I made with the envelope punch board. All of these cards fit right inside of there. I'm just going to keep one set out here, and I'll show you. I'll put the rest of them in the box. So four cards and envelopes fit nicely in this box. The belly band goes right on here. And I am going, oh, here. Make sure I don't bend my leaves up. You might, you, you'll want to put your finger under here if you decide to make one of these to, so that your leaves don't get all yanked around. But there we go, right back on here. How beautiful is this? I added a little wink of Stella to my um, fresh fig sprigs here. Yeah, pretty. What do you guys think? Now, this is going to be something that I share with my Facebook VIP group. And um, I do exclusive projects for my customers that order from me who belong to my Facebook VIP group. And it's just a little extra something that I can do for them to say thank you for um, your loyalty and ordering with me because I really do appreciate it. This is my full-time job. This is going to be part of the project that I share with them. I'm hoping to do that today also. Although, I have to tell you guys, I'm getting ready to leave to go to a training um, session out of state. So, I don't know if I'll be able to get to this, but I will get to it very soon. So, don't worry. I'm hoping Friday, today. And um, this is part of something I'm going to share with them. Remember the online class that I have with the Wonderful Romance also has a box? It's not this box. It's another box that is absolutely gorgeous and a set of eight cards that goes into the box in the online class. Also, you'll have four, or I'm sorry, eight different cards using this bundle, and they are beautiful cards because I don't think you could make, make anything that wasn't beautiful in the online class. Go to my blog, you'll find all the information if you'd like to place your own order and order the products that are listed on my blog. You need both ribbons, the seals, the flower embellishments, the stamp set, the framelits. It's all going to be listed there. You order all of that from me, I will give you the online class for free. 
Um, you'll also, because you order all the product from me, you'll also get added to my VIP Facebook group where you'll be able to see how to make this. So it's a win-win there. And if you already have this bundle, you can order the online class for $25 from me. So I've got a little bit of something for everybody. Is it time for M&Ms yet? Yeah, so this is my little metallic cup, and I it was empty, so I put my Valentine M&Ms in here. <laughs> little chocolate and stamping. Thanks, you guys, so much. Please click up here if you'd like to place an order with me. Um, click right down here to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You don't want to miss anything I have coming out, and I want to thank you so much for taking a little bit of time out of your day to spend it with me. Bye-bye. Thank you.